I'm here to visit one of the best painters that has ever come out of Great Britain. Yes, I'm talking about Thomas Gainsborough and that who's buried in this church right in front of me. Turn you around. Yep, this is St Anne's Parish Church. Um, like I said, we're in Kew, literally. I literally just passed um, Kew Gardens, like at the bottom of that street that I've just come past. Yeah, it's not as, um, it's not as pristine as I thought it would be because um, I found out that this grave is under the protection of the state. So, um, of course, um, oh geez, I'm gonna have to look here again. I know it was the 1700s, but oh, what year was it that Thomas Gainsborough died? 1797, that was it. Yeah, his, um, his dear wife, Anne, is also buried here as well and that and that but anyway yes he has had a previous restoration to this but only about i think it was about i think it was about 2014 i think or it might have been a little bit sooner than that but i believe it was 2014 that this had a major restoration and that because it was literally crumbling and all of that lot so he does yeah although the edge of it could do with um a bit of a clean <laughs> yeah Ugh. definitely could do with some wet and forget but uh, definitely not on a day like today that's for sure yeah oh if anyone is wondering what i mean by that is wet and forget is a special product that um attacks um mold of any sort so all that blackness that happens on white marble if you mix a small amount with um a big amount of water and then you just leave it for a few months it completely restores um, white marble back to its former glory but for obvious reasons you wouldn't do it on a wet day like today because the water would just dilute the um, thing you you need to do it on um, a dry day when you've got a few hours worth of dry weather so yeah so yeah um in case I, I doubt anyone would be watching this if they didn't know about thomas gainsborough but yes he was um he was a great artist of landscape and of um portrait i mean in fact one of his most famous paintings is of the um the blue boy and that and um yeah if anyone wants to see some photos of these i have accumulated some of those so i will insert those at the end of this video as well Yep, Egon Child Pub, where C.S. Lewis used to meet Tolkien and the other Inklers. <sighs> My god, he definitely got his inspiration from this city, that's for sure. Yep, just as I found out, yep, we've lost the lamb and flagon not the lamb and flagon flag yeah this was the pub inside that the bar gave Tolkien the inspiration for the prancing pony in Brie so. 
Yep. Oh, that is such a shame. I would have so loved to have seen the inside of that building, but oh well. And unfortunately, that's not the only pub that, with historical means that went down in the pandemic. Yes, we lost the eagle and child too. So, I just hope they can do something of historical value for it. Sorry about the traffic noise, guys. I'll talk as loud as I can on this microphone. Hopefully it's not too loud, I hope. But I don't think that's possible with all this traffic. So, yeah. Yeah. Sorry I can't do any more on that, guys. But that's the best I can do. some treating here but yeah. I think that though considering how old it is it actually isn't looking too bad So yeah, quite an old cemetery, but well, he did die quite a while ago, so I suppose that's to be expected. I'm just relieved I was able to get in in here in time because I believe they're about to uh, shut the gates soon. And, uh, apologies for the sirens in the background, we're not far from the Royal Free Hospital here. So yeah, that is the grave of John Constable and his family.
Okay guys, why have I just walked from Holywell Cemetery down that road and now I'm in front of this old house? Well, can you believe it? This house has been owned by Merton College since I have absolutely no idea how long, but in the 1950s J.R. Tolkien, while he was a professor at Merton College, which is literally just that way, I believe, if I recall, he actually lived here because he was a professor here. So remember, if you've seen my North Moor um, video, I visited his house there. Yes, he lived there through the 30s into the 40s. But for a few years, in the mid-1950s, I think just before the Lord of the Rings really took off and all that lot, he lived at this house. So, what do you think of that? Eh? Yeah.